Hello beautiful souls and welcome to today's reading which is going to be guidance for the week ahead and the decks that I'm using I've just actually used in a client reading and I just love the pairing of it so much that I was guided to use this for our guidance for the week ahead reading so that's what we're going to be journeying into so remember with every reading take what resonates leave what doesn't not every reading is for everybody these are collective readings they're not personal so please only take what you need and allow yourself to really sink into the guidance and the messages that are coming through here when it comes to something like guidance for the week ahead this is also about where to put our awareness where to put where to put our focus where to put our attention so let's get some opening messages and cards and see what wants to come through for our beautiful beautiful journey here so what do we need to see for our collective for the week ahead what guidance, practices, support do you need to see? Okay, so we have water, the overflow. Now, this is definitely something that's been coming up a lot, which is this energy of lack, of feeling completely depleted, completely burnt out, feeling like there's nothing left in the tank. And... I've been experiencing this in some ways. I've had friends been, been experiencing this, clients experiencing this, and it feels like there is so much going on right now. So what I'm hearing with this card, first and foremost, is you can only give from the overflow. You can only give when you have an abundance of energy within. You can only give what you have in excess. If you keep giving from a place of, of lack mentality or of people pleasing or of overgiving or woundedness, you will run yourself dry. And that's definitely been a theme playing out over the past couple of weeks. And we're definitely seeing a cracking coming forward in the next week or so that is going to be even more, I want to say, expansive in the sense of there is a depth of cracking and shadows coming forward for the collective. There is, you can see this, there is a lot of chaotic energy in the collective. There is a lot of intense sort of shifting in the collective right now. And so really, really just trusting in what that looks like for you. But knowing that we need to fill up our reserves. So that's what I'm really feeling with this water energy is we can only give from the overflow. So if you're feeling burnt out, if you are feeling exhausted, you need to top up and nourish. What does that look like for you? It'll be different for every person. Does it mean you just need to simply take a few moments to do a meditation every day? Does it mean that you are so burnt out that you actually need to take a few days off? Does it mean that you need to top up on your self-care, right? Like what is it for you? that you are depleted in, that you need to recharge, replenish, fill those stores up again so you can give from the overflow. This beautiful watery energy as well for me is really the other message I'm getting is learning how to go with the flow. And so we are in a very, very challenging collective energetic season. We've been in this for quite a while. It's still not done yet. We're almost at what I would say is one of the final cracking points. And a beautiful friend and I um, who speak about this stuff a lot, like we, we both are very, very tapped into these energies and we speak about it because it's very hard to find people to speak about some of the things that we talk about. And we were speaking about this yesterday as well of this. We know that there's a really intense cracking that's about to happen and we've been seeing it coming for a little while. We knew the dates, which dates were coming. Um, and this week is going to be a pretty intense week. We're going to see a few weeks of intensity, like it's almost like this, as we call it, that squeeze point, right? We're getting to that bottleneck energy and eventually that overflow of all of the chaos and all of the stuff that's been building is going to spill out into the collective as well. What that also means is that you may feel more triggers, more shadows, more projections, more reflections from the collective than you have in the past. And that may feel really triggering to yourself. So learning how to nourish, learning how to ground, learning how to have lots of self-compassion and love so you can navigate that with a little bit more ease and grace. So what this feels like is two, very twofold is one is making sure you're topped up. Two is going with the flow of what's coming because we are going to see quite an intense, what I would say is a cracking and crumbling of a lot of systems, a lot of programming. There is going to be a, a lot of uncertainty for those who are on their beginning stages of awakening or maybe they haven't quite awakened yet there is going to be a lot of fear coming to the surface as well so as I'm doing this this particular reading and I was told to do a guidance for the week ahead which I don't normally do in this way but it felt very strong that this is what needed to happen and to also have this dialogue around the energies and how they are going to be impacting us so 
really feeling into that. What does that look like for you? Are you burnt out? Do you need to top up? Is your heart feeling empty? Are you feeling full? Are you feeling the external pressure as well? Because the external pressure is definitely building for many of us. So feeling into that, navigating that in the best way possible. The more you can rest and replenish, nourish yourself, doing all of the things you need to to top up your level of self-care and energy, the more easeful the next few weeks to a month will be because there is going to be a lot of shifting in the next couple of weeks up to a month and then we're going to see a little bit of a, a pivot in the energy coming up so there's a lot there's a lot of play here let's have a look at our next card what else do we need to see for our beautiful collective for this guidance for the week ahead and we have gracious receptivity gracious receptivity now We've got the beautiful hummingbird energy. We've got butterfly energy in this as well. We've got Merkaba energy. We've got so much coming through. I love the fact that we've got kind of got this like third eye sitting at this at the throat chakra as well and lots of illumination points. But what I want to say with this is something that came to me. I don't remember if I've said this in a reading this week or not, but because it only came to me very recently. But what landed for me the other day was around this version of receptivity. And for many of us, we feel like we need to earn what we receive, right? If I give enough, I will receive. If I do this well enough, I will receive. And we're in this thing of trading off for receptivity. And the thing that landed for me the other day is that I'm no longer in a season of earn. I'm in a season of receive. And for me to change that language shifted the entire way I was seeing things. And so that's why I love this energy of gracious receptivity. So I always say give with grace, receive with gratitude. But I love that this is says gracious here. So when we give with grace, we give without expectation. When we receive with gratitude, we're receiving without expectation. And it's allowing yourself to be in that state of beautiful fluidity with our receptive self. So are you feeling receptive? Are you feeling open to the things that you desire? Or are you feeling like you still need to earn something that you desire and that you're blocking your receptivity of it. You're blocking your level or ability to be able to receive it with grace. And so asking yourself, is my heart open or closed to receiving? And do you feel like you need to trade in order to receive, to give, over give, excessively give in order to receive, which is probably why your tank is empty. If that's the case, if you feel like you have to continuously give to receive, your tank will be empty. You're overgiving. Receptivity or divine reciprocity, as I like to call it, is giving and receiving in equal measure without it needing to come from the same source and without there needing to be any kind of dialogue around it. We just trust. We know if we can be in this version of gracious receptivity or divine reciprocity, we will always receive what we need as long as we are not in the energy of overgiving. If we're in the energy of overgiving and giving to excess when we're depleting ourselves, then we are closed to receptivity. So how does that feel for you? What does that look like for you? How can you open your heart to be a little bit more receptive to the things you desire in your life? How can you receive with a little more a little bit more grace? Okay, third card here. What else do we need to see? You just popped right out. We have solar plexus chakra, radical illumination. I love this. This is all about us standing in our sovereignty. This is all about us allowing for our path to be illuminated from within. Now, what I'm really feeling here as well is for many, you may have been deeply, deeply triggered over the past few weeks. There has been a lot of collective shadow coming up. There's been a lot of people being triggered. I've seen a lot of projection of that trigger and I'm noticing it very strongly in the collective. But what I'm also seeing is that there is a lot of deep, deep, deep stuff rising from the base. So the root chakra, the sacral and the solar plexus. So this is what is being cleared out is that density, right? So the density that we're holding from the solar plexus down is what is being cleared out at the moment. You may feel it through the heart. You may feel it through the mind, but what it's clearing is the deeper nitty gritty muddier kind of energies 
So it may feel really uncomfortable. It may feel like you're processing a lot, dealing with a lot. But what it's trying to do is illuminate everything that is not of your highest nature, that is not of the highest love, that is not of your truest path. It is trying to illuminate everything that needs to be cleared so that you finally can understand what is and is not serving you. So what does that look like for you? This radical illumination through the solar plexus. Is your solar plexus open or closed? Are you allowing for divine sovereignty to land in the solar plexus? Are you having this sense of radical reclamation within self as well? Self-confidence, self-love, self-knowing, whatever that might be, because that's our solar plexus energy. But we're here to illuminate that solar plexus and shatter any other belief systems that are lower frequency, lower density, right? The really old, gnarly, shadowy energy has been trying to push its way up to the surface to be seen. And so if you've been resisting that, you may feel a little bit of blockage in the solar plexus, which is where we do certain breath practice or certain release work. So we can actually start allowing the energy to move fully through the heart space and up. So what are you resisting and purging? What is being brought up to the surface for your illumination? How are you processing that? How are you working with that? There is a lot of beautiful, beautiful energy coming through with those cards. So absolutely love that pairing. Let's get some additional messages. What else do we need to see to support our beautiful collective this week? And we are going to get four of these. So we have the Ace of Trees, Abundance. Love, love, love that. So abundance coming in. So the Ace of Trees is our Ace of Pentacles. And this is really allowing yourself to see... Ooh, really interesting message here. To see new ways for abundance to come in. To see new ways for your path to be illuminated. This is fresh beginnings. This is a new start. This is allowing yourself to see that maybe what you've been doing in the past isn't serving and it's time to hit the reset button and move forward. So what does that look like for you? What does that feel like for you? If you have been blocking abundance, are you blocking your receptivity? Are you feeling so drained that you're not receiving abundantly? Now, abundance does not mean money. I always like to clarify this because people get really fixated on money. Abundance is in all things. All things, joy, love, freedom, adventure, passion, whatever you want to call it. Abundance of all things. But because we do have it as the tree, so our pentacles, it is also focusing on abundance of money. Now, if you are in this state of lack, if you're in a state of burnout, if you're in a state of feeling completely empty, how can you be open to receiving? How can you allow this new energy of abundance to land in your field? If you're also not allowing this energy from the lower chakras to purge, right? Our trees, our pentacles is an earth-based energy, root chakra. If you're not allowing those lower chakras to purge, you're not facing the fears that you may hold in the root chakra around abundance. So this could also be some guidance work to do some abundance activations through the root chakra, allowing fears from the root chakra to be completely dismantled, to be completely dissolved and cleared out and transmuted. So feeling into that, but also don't overgive thinking that you need to do that in order to receive abundance because that is not how it works. Divine reciprocity does not work in that energy. And we all know that, but it's very hard sometimes to remember that. The next card we have is the King of Hearts, Healer. So this is our King of Cups. This is our emotional sovereignty normally, but I love that this card is the Healer card. So two messages with this one is one of them is that you may need to be spending more time on your own heart to heal it. You may need to be spending more time healing your body. You may need to be spending more time just focused on self-healing. Whatever that looks like for you, whatever area of your life needs healing, heal it, right? If you are still overgiving, heal it. If you are blocking receptivity, heal it. If your heart doesn't know how to be in that beautiful divine reciprocity, focus on healing that. If your root chakra up to solar plexus is feeling in any way blocked or stagnant or anything like that, focus on healing that. So that's the first message is whatever needs healing in your life is going to be craving your awareness to heal. The other message is for some coming up over this next week is the more you can be in this energy and heal these parts, the more you can sit in your healer frequency. So if you have this deep inner calling that you are a healer, maybe this is your season to start stepping into that in some way. For those of us who are healers, like I've been a healer my whole life. It's just, it's always been my job. And, but I know I'm going through a change right now, which is shifting the way I heal and shifting the way I resonate with healing in a beautiful way 
but it has definitely been very challenging because it's like I need to kind of go through these new initiations again. So if you are a healer already and you feel like things are a little bit stagnant or you feel like energy feels a little bit strange, also know that for those of us who have been in the healing space for a little while, everything is shifting and you may be going through, I don't like to use this word, but I'm going to use it because it's using it for ease. You might be going through an upgrade in your healing abilities. If you've done enough of this work, and you are in divine reciprocity, your ability to heal may be expanding. So I'm not alone in that. I definitely know a lot of healers that are, that are going through that. And we're all feeling this like this kind of very strange energy around our healing abilities and how it's shifting and how it's morphing into something new and beautiful. So really, really trusting in that. But what do you need to see for your own healer's journey? So how does your heart need healing? How does your reciprocity need healing and how can you activate more of your healing abilities as well that is the other message so let's get two more of these what else can we see the next one we have is the path exploration so this is normally the chariot but i love that we have this path i love that we have this radiant illumination coming through here the path being illuminated for your highest and best good the heart the path being illuminated for your most divine journey and it is ready to be explored but if there's a part of you that is resisting the path ahead it's time for you to take that leap of faith we've been seeing this a lot in many readings with like the three of wands and this like we're, we're paused we're ready and waiting and we're waiting to sort of take that step you've got to take that leap of faith and remembering that if you lead spirit will follow in whatever way that looks or the universe will follow but you have to be willing to take that leap of faith and that one of the things I always say so for those of you who who follow me on patreon you will have seen probably this email um I, I basically posted up a thing on patreon and it was about closing patreon down and one of the things I said in that um it was around we follow the path no matter the cost and it's something that I speak about all the time. We follow the path no matter the cost, even if it feels challenging, even if it feels hard. The path ahead is not always easy. But if you listen to your soul guidance, it is always for your highest and best good. Does it mean that the path ahead is always going to be, you know, oh, the path of least resistance and all that kind of stuff? No. For me to close down Patreon took me everything I had. For It was, I had to face every fear. I had to face every doubt. I had to face all the potential projections and hurt that I knew could come forward I had to let go of the feeling of feeling like a wasting years of my life because I'm closing something down that I've spent so many hours building all of those things they all came forward they were all fears of mine they were all parts of my resistance and yet I knew I had to still do it and so I sat with that. I felt that. I experienced that. I allowed it to be present while I was writing the email, while I was writing this out and knew, knowing that I had to close it down. But I knew as well that there was so much fear attached to it. And I had to sit with the fear, allow it to be present, allow it to have its voice and then say, OK, I know that's simply fear and I can still take the chance on what I'm being guided to do. So the path ahead is not always easy, but if you're willing to follow the path, no matter the cost, whatever your soul's path is, it is a journey of deep exploration into your wounds, into your shadows, but also into your higher expression. So how are you willing to take that leap of faith? What have you been avoiding that this week you could take that leap of faith on? That You could say, Do you know what? I don't care if it seems crazy. I'm going to take a leap of faith. I'm going to take that plunge. I'm going to allow myself to explore new terrain, knowing that this is for my highest and best good. So... Take it as it resonates and leave it if it doesn't. Let's get our next one. We have the five of hearts, which is our five of cups. This is our sorrow card. So this is also looking at it from the perspective of focusing on what you've lost versus on what you still have available or what you potentially could gain, right? When we look at the five of hearts, the energy is always around this feeling of look at everything I'm leaving behind, and it's definitely what I was going through when I decided to close down Patreon and when I, just, when, I, when I decided to go on this move and do this journey. You know, you can focus on what you're leaving behind. You can focus on the loss. You can focus on all the things that feel like failures. You can focus on all the things that feel like they, you know, broken in some way. 
or you can focus on the things that are still available to you, still present in your life, that you still have a connection to in some way. You can focus on the positive or you can focus on what has been and done. So where is your energy right now? Is it on the broken three of cups or is it on the full two of cups, which is how the five of cups normally is depicted? So where is your focus on what has been and done and lost and broken or on the potential of what is coming forward? Right. If you stay fixated on the past, you stay fixated in sorrow. If you stay focused on what is future and what is coming, right? We're receptive to something new. We're allowing in for something divine and new to come into our field. So what does that look like for you? Each person's journey with that will be different. Let's get three of these. What else do we need to see for our beautiful collective this week ahead? Guidance for this week ahead. Okay, the first one we have is the sacred well. Replenishment, self-care, giving from a place of plenty. Could we have a more perfectly aligned card to that water card there, right? Giving from a place of plenty. Stop and replenish yourself. I think this even came through in a reading the other day. But stop and give yourself the space you need to fill back up again. That you're not feeling that you're trying to give from a place of lack. Because if you're trying to give from a place of lack, you are going to receive that lack energy back and it's going to feel really resentful. So stop, give yourself some self-care, top your energy back up, then you can give from a place of overflow. And we have immerse yourself, training, learning, new hobbies and passions. I really feel like these cards have come through recently, which is really interesting. So immerse yourself, training, learning, new hobbies, passions. If your path right ahead doesn't quite feel clear, dabble in some energies. Try some new things. Play with some different things to see what lights you up again. For so many people, there's this feeling lately that I've definitely been feeling into and hearing. And even myself, it's like, I don't know what I'm passionate about anymore. Like what lights me up? If that's where you're at, it means your energy is low, right? You need to replenish first and then find that fire, then find that passion. But maybe as well, if your path isn't quite clear to you and you're not quite sure what abundance you want and you're not sh quite sure how you want to receive and you're not quite sure, right? All these different things. What do you need to learn? What new hobby can you train in? What can you explore? How can you allow yourself to tap into that energy to find a new passion something new and exciting for you to sink your teeth into because that's definitely what it feels like it's like sink your teeth into something that is so like chewy that you can really really deeply immerse yourself into okay third one of these what else do we need to see Okay, final card here with this is Atlantis. Keep the big vision, stay in alignment as you grow. So again, one of the things that we sometimes need reminders of, and even I need reminders of this every now and then, <laughs> as someone very beautifully did this to me yesterday, reminded me, is that we are growing, we are expanding, we are going through huge energetic changes and shifts. One, have compassion for yourself, but also two, keep yourself focused on what you're doing this for. Keep yourself focused on why you set out on this path in the first place. Don't lose sight of that. The moment you lose sight of that is the moment when things become harder and more stagnate. So keep yourself focused on why did you begin this journey in the first place? What are you setting out to create, to, to be, to bring into this world? Do not lose sight of that big vision because once you lose sight of that big vision, once you lose sight of that energy, everything becomes more challenging, right? And we continue to stay in our alignment as we grow. For me, letting go of Patreon was unbelievably challenging on so many levels. And it took me a lot to get there. It took me so much to have the courage to finally go, okay, I'm going to, to honor what I'm being guided to do. 
and I'm going to close Patreon down. It may not seem like a big deal, but it was a big deal for me because it felt like I was like letting go of years and years of work, or letting go of hundreds of hours of content, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of building that space, and yet I knew I needed to let it go. And this is what it means to stay in alignment as you grow. Because if I had held on to that, it would have been out of alignment. It would have been out of integrity. And so for me to stay true to who I am, to what I do, to the work that I'm here to do, to how I'm here to guide people and support people, I have to stay in alignment. I have to stay in alignment as I move and evolve and grow. And that sometimes means that energy of cutting something out in order for something else beautiful to flourish. And the analogy I use, which is one of my favorite analogies, it's a writing analogy, it's called Kill Your Darlings. And, you know, the origins of it are, you know, <laughs> different. Everybody has a different version of where the origins came from. But the way I heard it was from Stephen King. And it says, I'm just, I'm going to try and paraphrase it as best I can here because I always like to read it. But it says, kill your darlings, kill your darlings. Even when your little egocentric mind, uh, oh gosh, I've forgotten it. Even when your little egocentric mind does something, kill your darlings. And it basically means it doesn't matter how much work you've put into something. It doesn't matter how much you've invested into something. It doesn't matter how strongly you have an emotional connection to something. If it doesn't serve the bigger vision, the bigger purpose, it's time to let it go. And so from a writer's perspective, that can sometimes mean like we cut out extra words or we cut out an entire character or we cut out like the most beautifully crafted line, but we know it's just, it's, it's just like word fluff, right? And we know we need to cut and edit. And it's one of the hardest things as we write is to do that cut and edit because it's like, I spent so long crafting that perfect line and I've got to cut it. Right. And sometimes we have to cut a character or we have to cut a, an analogy or a piece of prose, whatever it might be. But for me, when I've been thinking about that in my business, it's the same thing. And it's like the analogy I gave someone yesterday was it's like cutting off the arm to save the rest of the body. So sometimes we have to take a drastic step in order for us to stay in alignment to what is true for us. And the way I put it was that I had to kill my darling, like which is Patreon, kill the darling for the sake of what is bigger. And the bigger vision was more important to me than the one piece, even though it was really hard. So again, not saying it's easy. I'm not saying that it won't have its fears and challenges come up. But if it is in your integrity and your alignment, are you willing to take that risk? Are you willing to do what is needed for you to evolve into the next version of self? That's really what it's looking at, right? Top yourself up, give yourself enough energy that you have an overflow and abundance to give and then start to step into this new energy that you're in. So every single person's version of this will be different. Take what you need, leave what you don't. And let's get our final card. Now, as I said, I had these out for a client reading and I just loved the way they flo like flowed with each other and I just loved the energy. Um, and I had a special deck pulled out for this client and I was just told, I wasn't going to do it for the collective, but I was just told to do it. So we are pulling our final card here and it is a roomy card. And so I'm going to be reading this from the guidebook. So if you are uncertain as to why I'm reading it from the guidebook, even though I know the roomy deck, inside and out. I always read it from the guidebook because to me, it's just been written so beautifully. I always read, there's about four different decks. I'll always read from the guidebook, no matter how much I know the card. So the card we have is one. So let's read our opening passage and the poem from Rumi. And one from Rumi, it says, I have abolished Oops, I'll start again. I have abolished duality from myself. I have seen the two worlds as one. One I seek, one I know. One I see and one I call. And then the extended meaning says, You look for me and what do you see? You. Am I playing games with you? Holding up a mirror for you to behold God? Yes, these are games of love and truth. Look for me and find yourself, for I am you and you are me, and together we are one, playing hide and seek, 
in love's great playground. So connecting into that beautiful essence, that divine essence of one, of oneness. So what does that look like for you? What does that have meaning for you in your own current reality right now? Maybe you have been living in a world of duality, feeling like you've been abandoned, feeling like you don't have a sense of purpose, feeling like you are kind of floating in this like abyss without anything to tether you. Tether yourself back to source. Tether yourself back to love. I like the phrase love in that because for me, it takes away all other notions, all other religious sort of connotations and all of that, the different indoctrinations people have been through. Connect back to love. Let love be the thing that is your oneness. And then from that place, how do you move forward? How do you journey forward with love as your co-creator, co-conspirator? It's a beautiful energy to connect into. So take what you need, leave what you don't as always. Everything is listed down in the description box below if you need any further support, such as readings or there's courses and activations and healings and everything else in between. But otherwise, sending you so much love, beautiful souls, and we'll connect again really soon.